substrate inoculation lab for cococord vermiculite and gypsum. This is commonly shorthanded as CVG in literature, and you'll probably see it referenced in the literature that we provide also as CVG. So anytime you see that, that's just cococor, vermiculite, and gypsum. I explain what those substrates are in detail during the substrate preparation video. So assuming that you've prepared your substrate and you have a nice healthy bag of myceliated grain, then you're ready to begin this lab. The reason that we use cococor vermiculite and gypsum is because they inoculate very well in an open air environment with therapeutic mushroom species that don't require as much nutrition. The cococor being very low in nutrition and then vermiculite essentially just being there for the hydration factor. It will help maintain the proper hydration, whether too high or too low, it kind of balances it out and it soaks up a lot of that moisture. The gypsum is the one nutrient that we're adding, has a really high mineral content as well that the mycelium really appreciates to help increase your yields and produce nice full canopies and large flushes. I suggest that you use around 70 to 80% CVG to 20 to 30% grain spawn. This could vary depending on the exact species or phenotype of that species that you are using, refer to growth parameters or any suggestions from the culture provider that you have acquired that culture from. Once we have our CVG and our myceliated grain spawn, we're ready to begin our substrate inoculation lab. When we're ready to begin, we'll spray down our hands and our arms with our isopropyl alcohol, make sure that we're not inviting any unwanted contaminants into the mix, and we're gonna spray down and wipe out our tub. This will be the bottom tub that you're gonna use, which is a cropping container that's got multiple holes around the sides. You might use a shoebox of a different size during this process, and that's fine. I suggest using anywhere between a 16 to a 24 quart shoebox size for this purpose. I like to use a smaller cropping container for this because if you get contamination on a smaller shoebox, it's a lot less heart wrenching to throw that out than a giant mono tub. Once you feel like you've perfected exactly how to put this all together, if you wanna scale up into a larger cropping container, that is entirely up to you. But for the purposes of this course, we're gonna use the small shoebox as follows. First, you're gonna spray out your shoebox, and you're gonna wipe it down with isopropyl alcohol. Next, you're gonna grab a piece of foil, and this is gonna be our liner. A lot of folks like to use a plastic trash bag. The only reason that we're using this liner is really to keep light from coming into the sides of our substrate and creating a lot of side pinning. This causes mushrooms to grow on the sides and the bottom of the block, which are hard to get to and are not the optimal growth conditions because they're growing against the wall. The reason that they'll grow on the bottom or the sides is because the humidity is so high there that it causes the mushroom to fruit in the highest humidity environment. So by blocking out the light, which is a primary pinning trigger, we cause them to grow upon the top and to pin into a nice upward full canopy flush. Once we sprayed down our liner, we can start pressing it into the sides of the box. I also like the foil for the purpose of being able to press it and it holding its form. Sometimes when you're working with plastic liners, it can be hard to get them to stay in place as you start to fill your shoebox with your substrate and your grain spawn. This can be really frustrating because you'll get substrate and grain falling down all over the sides of your liner, which is not necessarily a problem, but it does create a more messy environment that I personally and a lot of other folks don't really enjoy. If you are going to use a plastic liner, one trick that you can do is you can tape the liner up on all four sides just with a small piece of tape and then remove it once you fill the tub on that liner. Once you've got your liner in place, we're gonna give it one more wipe on the sides and the bottom of that liner with our soaked isopropyl paper towel and then we're able to start filling our tub. I suggest using a kitchen scale to get your weights spot on. If you over grain spawn, you potentially are going to decrease yields because the mushrooms are trying to continue to eat that nutrition instead of moving out into the substrate that they'll grow more effectively off of. If you're gonna be very exacting and go by weights, I suggest adding the substrate first to the exact weight of substrate to spawn ratio that you're looking for. Once you've achieved that, you can either tear your scale or just add up to the total weight with the spawn that you'll be using for that amount of substrate. 
If you're eyeballing this, you can start to add handfuls at a time. For instance, if you're gonna do a 70 to 30 ratio, then you can add two handfuls of substrate versus one smaller handful of spawn. Continue this process until you've reached essentially right at that hole level. Keeping your substrate level right at the small holes on your tub will allow a CO2 buildup to be able to escape the tub and provide the optimal fresh air exchange for your mushrooms and not have a lot of CO2 pooling too close to the base of your mushrooms. When working with certain species, CO2 buildup is actually an advantage. In order to modify the CO2 exchange for certain species, you can either fill your substrate slightly above those holes, or you can tape them up around and just allow some CO2 let off. Once your substrates reach the bottom of your holes, I like to add a small thin layer of your CVG to the top to add a nice moist layer on top that allows that mycelium to push upwards and cover the top of your tub. Certain species are gonna appreciate a casing layer, but we'll apply that down the line when we do the fruiting process. So don't worry about that right now. Once you've filled your shoebox with the proper amount of substrate, grab your shoebox lid, spray it down with isopropyl, and wipe it off well. Attach the lid to the top of your shoebox, grab your micro pour tape, and apply it on the edge of your lid so that it can be rolled under to the lip of your shoebox. The idea here is that we're closing the gap so that no pests, those cyrid flies that were discussed earlier, Boo. can get in and invite contaminants before you're ready to put your mushrooms to fruit. Once you've taped the lid to the underside of your shoebox with your micropore tape, you can write the date, the species name, and any other pertinent information about that specific species or preparation process. Now set it on a shelf in a dark place so that it can incubate and get ready to fruit. In around two to three weeks, you may start to see pins in your shoebox. That would be the signal to go ahead and bring that shoebox into fruiting conditions. If you are working with a species that requires a casing layer at around two to three weeks, you'll pull that shoebox off the shelf and apply the casing layer accordingly. That's moving into the fruiting process, which you can check out on our fruiting video.